The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Jeremiah chapter 26. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen and every one turn from his evil way that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make the city, the city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, this house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seats in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because... He has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon the city, this city and its inhabitants. For in truth the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and, and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. 
Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory be to thee. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor, in which he trusted, and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Spiritual war warfare is one of those things that's usually thought of as just a silly superstition from the Middle Ages, and it has really no part in life today, especially for Christians. But Jesus speaks and acts otherwise in today's gospel lesson. And our Lord Jesus is challenged twice. First, by those who claim that he casts out demons by the power of the devil, and then by those who desire from him a sign from heaven. Or in other words, do it again, Jesus! But today's gospel lesson only deals with the first of those challenges, that of Jesus casting out demons by the power of the devil. And the sign that Jesus does give later in Luke's gospel is only the sign of Jonah. Those who are challenging Jesus among their own numbers are those who also are casting out demons, and some of them, St. Luke tells us in chapter 9, some of them are doing it even in the name of Jesus. Are they casting out demons by the devil? Or are they casting out demons in the name of Jesus? Be consistent, people. If Jesus does the same by the power of the devil, then they must do it too. Or does Jesus cast out demons by the finger of God? After the first two plagues struck the Egyptians by the hand of Moses, the magicians of Pharaoh were able to duplicate them. They changed water into blood, and they made frogs come out on the land of Egypt. But they weren't able to reverse the first two plagues. But when God commanded Moses to strike the dust of the earth, and from it would come forth gnats to cover man and beast, Pharaoh's magicians couldn't duplicate it. And the magician said, this is the finger of God. And the finger of God continued to work against the Egyptians until finally God set his people free from their bondage. The finger of God accomplished 
the salvation of his people. And now the finger of God casts out demons. The battle that had begun in the wilderness with Jesus being tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. The battle continues by Jesus who continues to divide the spoil. For the strong one, the devil, is defeated by the stronger one, Jesus. The devil thinks he has the winning spot, but Jesus disarms him and overcomes him. This is the finger of God. And when that battle is done, when the spiritual warfare is ended, what happens? Well, something has to take the spot where those demons once were. For what happens to a house that no one lives in? It doesn't take long for that house to start to degenerate and fall apart. And what happens to the person who is no longer claimed by the devil? Either that house, your flesh, is dwelt in by the Holy Spirit, by the hearing of the word, or the demons return. And this time, bringing with it more evil demons. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. And so we hear the words in the rite of holy baptism. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Those of you who have been confirmed, and those of you who are about to be confirmed, these questions have been or will be asked of you again. For there are no empty houses. And Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Either your house, your flesh, is occupied by the devil or by Jesus. Either you're with Jesus or you're against him. There's no neutral ground. There isn't a no man's land between the trenches in this spiritual warfare. So do you hear the Lord's call for you to intensify your struggle against sin, death, and the devil? That's what the Lenten season is about. As every day of the Christian's life is a struggle against these enemies, but during Lent we hear Jesus calling us to intensify that struggle and to remember that there are no empty houses. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Jesus casts out demons by the finger of God. The devil's not divided against himself. Solely by the finger of God does Jesus do battle for you. He doesn't strike the Nile. He doesn't send frogs or gnats or any such things. By the new and better Moses... Jesus strikes the devil. And this new and better Moses, Jesus, carries your sins and your sorrows in himself, and he defeats death, and he cleans your house through the washing of regeneration with the word and by the hearing of that word. And the woman who bore Jesus is blessed. And the church will forever call her the Blessed One, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus doesn't disagree with the woman from the crowd, but he adds to it and says, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Just as the Blessed Virgin Mary had heard the very word of God and said, Let it be to me according to your word. Mary heard the word believed it, and kept it. She believed in the promise given to her. 
Just as you are called by the gospel out of the darkness of the devil's kingdom and his evil reign, and you are no longer under the devil's darkness, but you are in the light of Jesus. And in the name of the triune God, the devil is cast out, and Jesus, the stronger one, has claimed you as his own. But that doesn't mean that the devil and his demons are finished with you. But they throw everything they have at you each and every day. Luther writes in the large catechism, Then comes the devil, pushing and provoking in all directions. But he especially agitates matters that concern the conscience and spiritual affairs. He leads us to despise and disregard both God's word and works. He tears us away from faith, hope, and love, and he brings us into misbelief, false security, and stubbornness. Or on the other hand, he leads us to despair, denial of God, blasphemy, and innumerable other shocking things. These are snares and nets, indeed real fiery darts that are shot like poison into the heart, not by flesh and blood, but by the devil. So here, once more, that beatitude speaking, spoken by the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. There are no empty houses. Continue to intensify your struggle against sin, death, and the devil. But you do this not of your own will or your own might, but by the hearing of God's word and keeping it. For as God has swept and cleaned out your house of flesh, so he has cleaned out and put in order this holy house and has granted us his holy word to be preached here in its truth and purity. And may he continue to bless this congregation with that holy word preached for Jesus is the stronger one who binds up the devil. You hear that blessed word of God, believe it, and keep it. For the finger of God has won salvation for you. And by faith alone, you receive that salvation. By grace alone, your sin is forgiven. And by the, and by the mighty work of God, sin, death, and the devil are defeated enemies. And you renounce them every day. For you live in your baptism, which now saves you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.